Welcome to episode 2 of Persian Injected Carburetors. Now let's get down to it. This is our regulatory unit. And we have added our extra chamber, chamber E. And we're going to get down to business. Now, just like before, air comes in to our throttle body assembly, to our air filter. And we have high pressure air going to chamber A, which is impact air, and venture pressure going to chamber B. As the shot valve open, venture pressure increases, creating low pressure here, high pressure here, and our valve is connected to this diaphragm, and the differential pressure happens, and the high pressure moves it towards the low pressure zone, of seating the pocket valve from its seat, allowing fuel to come in to chamber D and to our FCU. Now let's look at this side of the diagram. Now fuel is coming from a fuel pump and it is going to a fuel strainer. Now this strain has to be taken out at intervals for inspection. We have our vent separator in chamber E. The purpose of this is to um, get rid of vapor that might happen from the fuel pump, the heat of the engine, etc. How this happens is a float and as the vapor builds up here we uh, don't have any amount of fuel that could rise in this area the float dust sinks and it opens a valve which is then allow the vapor to vent back to our aircraft fuel tank and as the vapor goes back more fuel is allowed into chamber E pushing up the float closing off the valve and this is a continuous process automatically happening. From chamber E, when the valve is off its seat fuel goes to our FCU on metered fuel. Chamber C receives metered fuel pressure from our discharge nozzle. This is around 5 to 10 psi pressure going into here. Now the purpose of C and D being where this is a fuel meter in section in a way in that we want a quarter psi differential drop across our <coughs> across our fuel jet nozzles now if there's increase let's say we get a five and a half increase in discharge pressure from our from our nozzle from main jet we're going to have an unstable equilibrium and our chamber is going to push the puppet valve to open it more right and that is going to cause a five and three quarter increase in this uh, in fuel flow in here which is now going to cause a quarter differential pressure to happen again right and vice versa if the charge fuel discharge pressure in this side decreases then the valve you know is going to either close or open depending on situation now there's some maintenance checks that we must carry out on our vent separator one of these checks is removing the line from the fence separator to turn a fuel pump. Initially, we're supposed to get a fuel fuel out of the vent on this check when we open the line, and then it's supposed to be trickling out. Now, if we're getting a continuous flow of fuel through this vent, is that our valve is stuck open and our float is not working, our setup here is not working. If, on the other hand, this here is stuck we'll get no initial flow of fuel no trickling nothing at all so based on that simple check we'll know whether or not we have to send our carburetor for overall <laughs> unless you have the approved maintenance facility to overall this carburetor on the other hand at idle venture pressure is very low and thus we have to get the means of getting fuel to our engine so when the venture pressure is low and idle our valve is going to want to close you have to prevent that so this idle spring comes into effect and 
and sends fuel to FCU by keeping our valve off its seat. At high power settings, the idle spring becomes inoperative and our regulatory chamber for air takes over. Alright guys, see you on our next episode which is FCU for pressure injector carburetor. Later!